Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going to dedicate an episode to automatic writing. This is a powerful technique that you can use to explore your inner voices and the connection to other voices outside of you, similar to channeling, perhaps much more than that. Ruth Montgomery is one of my favorite that discussed the art of automatic writing and many of her books contain some incredible information that she obtained through automatic writing. Dick Sutphin, the famous hypnotist, also did an amazing job of teaching in his seminars automatic writing. And there are many people that have discussed powerful realizations that came to them in this process of automatic writing. So we're going to discuss some different examples from other people as to what they were able to obtain from automatic writing. And then I'll have a short meditation at the end of this that you can use to put you into a state where you can begin to automatically write. And I can't wait to hear what results come from it. Susan A. Matusak from West Springfield, Massachusetts said, she was first exposed to automatic writing at a Sedona psychic seminar in October 1985. At the time, she didn't believe that she could do it. She was astounded when the pen began flying across the paper, revealing information of value. She has since used the technique often and has taught it to many people in the Connecticut area. Attached is a sample of what I received, she said. I've underlined two particular passages I found to be very interesting as well as inspirational. Seeking information on love, she wrote, Oh, my dear child, you have come so far and you have so far to go. But keep that smile on your face, for every day is a creation and every day is a time to celebrate existence in God's world. Take the time you need to learn the truth, for it is in truth we gain wisdom and in wisdom we gain God. Love, love, and love. As you are learning, it is not always being nice that creates the right way for the situation. It is in love that we allow others to grow and gain wisdom. Do not fear the unknown. The nations are ever friendly. What you have to do is step closer to the truth. Be quiet when you walk, but be loud in your actions. Learn to trust your guardians as we never leave you. We are here. Let the flame of love grow brightly every day. It is to be seen and used. It is to be. It is your path. It won't be easy, but it will be a giant leap into God for you realize that it has to be. Don't fear. There are many by your side helping you, assisting you along the way. Create the space for them. Thus, you create your reality. Learn to see the masses for what they are and play the role you have been assigned. Look to each obstacle as a learning experience and it will no longer become an emotional toil for you to endure it. Leave behind what is not important and move to the next step. Create the reality as honestly as you can knowing that honesty will see you through. Feed the flame of hope into the eyes of the masses. Let them know of thy care and that they are cared for. Let your eyes shine as never before, as your light is much more than a flicker. It is a fire of love and light. Remember, it is made by God. Yes, as you are God. We so love you and the work you are doing. Pick up the paintbrush and create the colors of love. Create the story as it were, as it was never told before. Create to express the eternal. Who are you? Susan asked mentally. I am one of many painting the colors of your life. We are the paint and you are the canvas. Allow us to occasionally dip the paintbrush and do our work along thy path also, as we have assignments to, you know. I am Sir Mandel and was a 17th century painter. We are many here. I just speak at this time to bring to you the awareness of the power and beauty of your paint. Thank you, Sir Mandel. May we meet again, Susan asked. We have never parted with much love and respect, Sir Mandel. Kim Carraway from Phoenix, Arizona said, In 1973, a Texas psychic told me one of my guides was a doctor and that he wanted to contact me through automatic writing. 
On my first attempt, I got, help me, please help me. I was fearful to begin with, and that did it. I called the psychic, and he told me never to do it without a prayer of protection. On the next attempt, the pencil started to fly across the page, line after line. Handwriting totally unlike mine, in summary it said, Sarah has waited so long to be with you, and it's time you let her through. I had tried for years to get pregnant using every technique available, including fertility drugs. Nothing worked, and I gave it up. Another pertinent fact, I was married to an alcoholic. The automatic writing went on to say the reason I hadn't conceived was that I subconsciously feared my child having an alcoholic father. I grew up with an alcoholic father. The writing said, this was not my decision to make. I was told to start changing my mindset by telling people I would get pregnant, would have a little girl, and her name would be Sarah. I followed the instructions, although many friends as well as my born-again Christian family thought I'd gone off the deep end and wanted me to find professional help. Three months later, my pregnancy was confirmed. I decided to name the child Sarah, if it was a girl, dropping the H. The next automatic writing said, We have to tell you Sarah wants her name to be spelled with an H at the end. She also says to tell you that she will wait long enough to be okay, but not as long as you think to be born. She has waited so long, she will wait just long enough. Sarah was born premature, jaundiced, and had to remain in the hospital a while. I left her father when she was three months old. When I eventually had a numerology chart done for Sarah, I was told that souls impress the desired name into the minds of the parents to be assured the proper vibrational rate. The numerologist became excited and showed me how that H was of the utmost importance to my baby's name. Her astrology is almost totally outgoing with hardly any introverted tendencies it says that she will most likely be very career-oriented in the public eye and potentially unbalanced in that there's very little reservation. The spelling of Sarah with an H brings a degree of balance to her chart. Lori L. Dingman from Perry, Michigan said, One day while I was involved in my normal activities, an internal voice said, Within the hearts of all men burns the flame of the Christ spirit. I thought, that's very poetic. I'm not a poet. I got a pen and paper and wrote it down. No sooner had I written it down than my hand took off and started writing. The words came so fast, I could barely keep up with the dictation. Since then, I have taken to using the typewriter during my automatic writing sessions. It is the only way I can keep up. Enclosed are some of the samples of messages I've received. I can stop the dictation at any time with a question or to discuss anything that is on my mind. From 71187 Typing is very good. It is much faster. As we learn the keyboard, it will become the most efficient way to communicate. You can take care of the spelling and we will dictate. Lori said, who is Minj? Minj is or was a person you knew in a past life in India in the fourth millennium. You do not have recall of that life as you do of others. There were many great tribes in India at that time. You were a woman and Minj was your husband. He is now the person you know as your uncle. Your debt to him was balanced long ago. The purpose for your association in this life is to help him to understand himself. Though it is a minor association in this life, your main relationship is with your husband. This is your perfect outworking with your husband. There is much good in the relationship and much more good can come if you both will work at it. Be kind to one another. This is the best advice we can give you. Lori asks, where have I known my mother before? You have known your mother in many lifetimes. The last time you were together, you were the mother and she was the daughter. Much of that relationship has carried over from a 7th century lifetime in Greece. Lori asked, was I in Pompeii? Yes, you were there. Though you made your home in a small fishing village, it was a very happy, contented life. You've lived many lifetimes as each individual on the earth, trying to learn his lessons in order to progress. We will tell you about those lifetimes at another time. You are getting tired. Be at peace, the master of the seven rays. Uh, in another automatic writing session, they said, Hello, we welcome all of mankind to our consciousness, for we are the consciousness of love, joy, and peace. Meditate on these things and learn to express them more fully. Lord then asked, What is your message for today? Today we wish to talk to you about the nature of man's free will. Free will was given by the Creator so that man would be able to express love to his fullest potential. This is a double-edged blade, however. As well as having free expression, man also has the potential to abuse it. When fear entered human consciousness, 
Free will turned from a loving, joyful expression to one of ignorance and doubt. The expression of free will produced all the lower emotions. Man saw himself as separate from God and separate from all his brothers and sisters. This was the fall from grace, the figurative eating of the forbidden fruit. Yes, it was a sad thing, but there was still hope, still time to return to the true self. It saddens us greatly to see all that goes on every day on the beautiful jewel known as Earth. There is so much negativity that it looks to us like a dense black fog penetrating everything on the planet. Now is the time of mankind's awakening, however, and a few lights are beginning to penetrate the dense fog. This is why you must unite with others of like minds and hearts. Together, you can break up the negativity. Think on these things. Meditate on them and unite as brothers and sisters of the light. Herald the new age by remembering your true self, your God self. There is no separation from God. There never has been. Be at peace. We are with you. As always, we are the masters of the seven rays. Mary Informer from Lowell, Massachusetts stated, In 1984, I read A Search for Truth by Ruth Montgomery. She offered instructions on how to do automatic writing. My first attempt was an illegible scrawl, but I could read the word moon in several of the lines. With a couple of days' practice, the writing had improved sufficiently for me to be able to read at least half of what was written. I discovered that Moon was my spirit guide. In fact, he called himself my soulmate. According to him, the bond of love has always existed between us since before the creation of the physical universe. He was watching over me and waiting impatiently for me to return to what he termed true reality. After a couple of weeks of this, I thought I must have some kind of mental disorder. Yet at the same time, it totally fascinated me and I began to look forward to the writing sessions. I also began meditating each day. By this time, I was hearing the words in my head even as my hand was writing them. I purchased a home computer and since then have typed the messages and saved them on disks. As you can imagine, I now have a tremendous amount of information on many varied subjects. My doubts about my mental stability continued until I had a reading with a psychic. She uses psychometry and automatic writing. I was asked to write one question on a piece of paper and keep the paper with me during the reading, but I was not to show it to her or tell her what the question was. I decided to ask, who is Moon? Because I really was curious to find out whether my experience was coming from outside of myself. The psychic knew nothing of what had been happening to me. At the end of the reading, she channeled the following message for me in answer to my written question. Swept by the waves of the ocean, down through the winds of time, I watch you with sweet remembrance. You are mine, dear love, all mine. The psychic told me while she was writing that she had felt the presence of a very strong force, a soul who was very different from those whom she usually encountered while receiving messages. The feeling reminded her of a dark entity who had pursued Taylor Caldwell through many of her previous lives. This information was given in the book The Search for a Soul by Jess Stern. She told me to try to find the book and read it, which I did. I could see why she felt the similarity. Right from the beginning, Moon had written that he was a dark soul who had found the light but could fall again. From that point on, I began to accept what I was channeling without too much thought about how genuine it was. Moon predicted the space shuttle disaster five months before it happened. He supplied pertinent past life readings for people. I know nothing about their names given to me by friends and family. Many of his writings reflect the dual nature of everything, the light and the dark. He constantly stresses how all souls are eternal with choice and free will. Moon has said he talks to me in dreams of which I have no memory, but I often experience what I call flashes, which according to him are recalled memories of what he told me while I slept. I usually feel very peaceful and relaxed when I channel, and this calmness stays with me for some time after a session is over. Like most people, my life is often hectic, frustrating, and sometimes very unhappy, but I now have an inner sense of peace that his teachings have brought to me. I believe there are no accidents. We do create our own reality. We perpetuate this self-created reality by choosing the people and the circumstances we experience. I'm enclosing some messages Moon has written about himself at different times. From September 3rd of 1984, in response to the question, who are you? Mighty warrior, prince, cherished one, fallen one, lord of all, Platerus, I am Moon, Thebus, Cantor, Sacho, Danus, Melfer, and many more. I am an archangel, a wizard, a poet, a warrior, a deceiver, a fulfiller, a dark soul that has found my salvation. 
Another on May 12th, 85, come forth and read my words, all those who doubt that I am moon. I am the one I say I am, and I have seen and done the things of which I tell. I have watched worlds be born and others die. I have marched with armies through desolate wastes, spurred on by the desire to kill for glory. I have crossed the vastness of space and viewed a million galaxies. I have looked upon the abyss and know that there lies true evil, for it contains no form or pattern. I have climbed the mountains of Ixa, Gamoth, and Earth, and I have swum in their bright rivers too. I know the pain and sorrow of the flesh. I am here to tell you. They are but transient things for the endless soul to ponder upon. I have dwelt within a tiny flower and felt its joy when the rain washed and nourished it, and I have been one with the fiery particles of a comet as it blazed across the skies of many worlds. I have been arrogant, treacherous, and destructive, yet I strive for the true wisdom of love. I write of the oneness that was and will be again, though different, for in true reality the oneness is and has never ceased. Do not doubt me, I exist even as you do. Automatic writing is one of my favorite techniques. And I love to read about what different teachers would teach in the way they did it. Dick Sutphin taught in his seminars, almost every participant would quickly experience results. Ideally, you can spend half a day teaching it First, talking about the subject and relating your own experiences as well as, as those of other author friends. Then after giving exact instructions, you can induce group hypnosis and direct a powerful automatic writing session, giving participants 20 minutes to quiet time to receive the writing. For the next session, Sutphin would instruct them to find a partner, someone they did not know before the beginning of the seminar. And they would go into an altered state on their own and use automatic writing to do a psychic reading on their partner. The success rate of this was phenomenal and skeptics are often converted on the spot. Just about anyone interested in metaphysics is aware of Ruth Montgomery and her books, and she has written used um, automatic writing. Each morning she would sit down at her electric typewriter, she would say a prayer, and that allows Lily and the group to communicate through her hands. Sutphin would explain that one morning nearly 12 years ago, shortly before his son Travis was born, Ruth received some writing about him and why he was coming into this incarnation. She had sent it to her, but it was somehow lost in the mail. It was a few months after Travis was born that he first learned of the writing. Ruth and he were working together at a Phoenix, Arizona seminar. He thought it was because he was so upset about not receiving the information that the following morning Ruth asked her guides for the information once again, this time by hand. At breakfast, she handed him this page, November 11th phoenix symbol lily travis is a highly developed entity who chose his parents for this outstanding work they will be doing in making preparations for the new age he is a remarkable soul who reached a high level of development in a life in turkey in the 15th century bringing enlightenment to that warlike area and leading many along the path that broke through the barriers of the dark ages his mission now is to lead others out of the chaos following the axis shift and into the new age of enlightenment This is a good area in which to pursue that endeavor, and he will advance rapidly for his parents and will release him from restraints and let his free will soar. He will be a leader among men, as he has been many times before, all for now love from us here. Jess Stern, who wrote about Edgar Cayce and also about automatic writing in her book Door to the Future, wrote about channeling and automatic writing And this is some of what Jess had to say. Arthur Ford, the great medium, was an intimate friend of mine. He visited me in my home and I visited him down in Florida. I loved him deeply. Toward the end of his career, we were talking about the authenticity of his communication. He said, you know, Jess, at this point in my life, I sometimes question myself. I even question Fletcher, my guide, whom I believe in so implicitly. I wonder if I was just dramatizing my own subconscious. I responded by saying, Arthur, it really doesn't make much difference, does it? You don't know where the information is coming from. You haven't misrepresented anything. Maybe the information is coming from an experience you had before or from a past life or from the universal intelligence. What difference does a name make? The only thing that really matters is the truth of whatever it is that comes through. Sutphin says, Jess, you are willing to talk about the contacts you had with Edgar Cayce while you were writing this book about him. 
She says, yes, in the early 60s, I was writing and researching my book, A Door to the Future. I went to Virginia Beach to visit Association for Research and Enlightenment. The reception from ARE people was overwhelming. I'd been working for big city newspapers and Newsweek, but I'd never received a reception like this. They opened everything up to me. Hugh Lynn Casey gave me a key to the library so I could do research at 2 a.m. if I wanted to. A day or so after I arrived, Hugh Lynn said, I have something I want to show you. I might surprise you. It was a reading by Edgar Casey in 1931 when Jess was still a kid. It said, be good to Stern when he comes down from New York because he will be of great value to the organization. So I looked up at Hugh Lynn and said, well, there are a lot of Sterns in New York. How do I know it's me? So he showed me another one. Casey did all these readings about what he called the work. The third reading caused my stomach to kick over because it said, have Dave Kahn tell Stern about the work Kahn was the guy in New York who was first mentioned Edgar Casey to me five years earlier in Harold Ridley's office when he found out I was interested in the esoteric. Nobody knew about that. One evening after A Door to the Future was published, I was having dinner with the president of Doubleday, my publishing company. He asked, what's your next book? I explained I was working on a book about the psychic age, but I didn't seem to be getting anywhere with it. He said, why don't you write about Edgar Casey? I think everyone would be interested in that. Back in my apartment late at night, I decided to act on his suggestion. I was going through my files on Casey when the phone rang. It was a medium I knew, a Madame Bashiba. She had gained some notoriety by telling the mayor of Chicago to be very careful with whom he sat in public. Somebody was going to take a shot at a man more prominent than he. If he wasn't careful, the bullet might hit him. He laughed and told the newspaper people about it. Sometime later, he was sitting with Roosevelt shortly after the president's inauguration in Florida. When an assassin shot at Roosevelt, the bullet was deflected and killed the mayor. The papers reported the story and made Madame Bathsheba quite famous. At any rate, I was expected to listen to her. She called me shortly before 1 a.m. and said, Jess, Edgar Casey just came to me. He had a long conversation. He is very pleased that you're going to be doing this book about him. At this time, I told no one, having just decided to do the book. Bathsheba continued, yes, he's very pleased. He wants you to know that he wants to help you. How is he going to help me? I asked. Well, he has a title for the book, The Sleeping Prophet. So I wrote all this down and then she told me he wants you to get into reincarnation. He wants you to talk about Dr. Ketchum. He wants you to talk about the life readings and prophecies and predictions. If you do all that, you'll write the book very easily and it will become the number one bestseller in the country. So I accepted what she told me because there was no harm in accepting it. She also said, anytime you run into any difficulty, he'll look over your shoulder and be ready to help you. Well, Dick, it took me only three weeks to write that book. One chapter was troublesome, so I asked Edgar, help me out. I don't want to borrow any of Ruth Montgomery's concepts, but I honestly think he walked in. I felt his presence very strongly and suddenly saw the subject of the chapter in a different light. It made it very easy for me to finish the book. Brad Steiger has written over a hundred metaphysical books since 1956, a record unmatched by anyone else in the field. We had just completed a national seminar tour together and were both living in Scottsdale, Arizona in 78 when Brad decided to write his first novel and so many nonfiction books. This was a major transition and he was understandably a little nervous about it. At lunch one day, I asked him how it was coming. Well, I've decided to get a little help, he responded and asked that I keep this confidential. I decided to ask for the assistance of the two writers I most admire, Nathaniel Hawthorne and Edgar Allan Poe. With their help, it's going very well. The book was called The Hypnotist. Shortly after, Brad submitted the final manuscript to his agent. The agent called and said, Brad, I love the book, but it's weird. It reads like Hawthorne, Poe, and you. Once the book was published, Brad no longer minded if the story was told. I never asked him exactly what techniques he employed to get the extra help, but I do recall him saying, I'm using my little rituals. The Donning International Encyclopedia Psychic Dictionary by June G. Beltzer defines automatic writing to allow an etheric world intelligence to intervene in one's hand and arm and write on paper information that one had no way of knowing from formal education or life experiences. Medium must have the body chemistry, know how to relax and keep the conscious mind neutral. Medium holds pen in hand over the paper until the intelligence enters and moves the hand and pen pencil. Writing is swift, 
and frequently runs together as if the entity could lose control if he or she picked the pen up from word to word. Writing could be large and slanting, accomplished in trance state or in awareness state, appearing that the medium was entirely conscious. Sutphin says he agrees with everything but the part about body chemistry. He had found that anyone can learn to do automatic writing if they are properly instructed and entered into an altered state of consciousness and are willing to work at it. Body chemistry might, however, explain some of the cases of accidental automatic writing in You Were Born Again to Be Together. Sutphin told a story about his sister-in-law. She was sitting at the kitchen table having her morning coffee and doodling with a pencil when her hand began to write on its own. Large writing asked that she change hands. She is left-handed, but when the pencil was transferred to her right hand, the entity responsible for the transmissions explained that he had been right-handed while living on the earth. Lillian Bateman of Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada, sent uh, Sutphin an account of uninvited episode of automatic writing she was afflicted with in 1962. Today, she is 74 and still looking for answers as to why she had the experiences. Does heredity have anything to do with it, she asked. My great-grandmother was a Highland Scot reputed to have second sight. Lillian was a registered nurse when the writing began. I had perched on my usual stool in front of the desk by the window, idly wondering what I'd need to order for nursery supplies. Traffic flowed by on the street below. My pen was poised above the slip of paper on the shelf in the milk lab when my right arm started to tingle and the hairs on it began to rise. I thought for a second that I'd unknowingly bumped my funny bone, only I knew I hadn't. While I ran through all the explanations I could think of, my hand cramped, my fingers grasped the pen, and it began to move independently of my will, leaving queer tracks that I suppose could be called writing. My first thought was, my God, I'm having a stroke, and I'm jumping up, dropping the pen, and stood there stupidly rubbing the afflicted arm. It felt perfectly normal now. My fingers worked, and there was no more of the tingling sensation. If not a stroke, perhaps a sort of cerebral spasm, and in that case, I'd better check my eyes. Going to a mirror over the sink in the formula room, I stared at my pupils. Both were equal in size, although perhaps a bit dilated. That was all. Other reflexes tested normal as well. A check from my blood pressure proved it was normal. Returning to the desk, I wondered if it had all been a product of my imagination, and I returned to the task of ordering the supplies. Upon retrieving the fallen pen, I grasped it firmly and wrote briskly, Done. I had no interference until I paused to concentrate on the other supplies. As soon as I relaxed my grip, the pen and tingly arm and the whole silly business began all over again. This time I didn't panic. I made myself relax and watch. At first the pen made spirals and scrolls, but it soon developed a rhythm and uniformity of line. Fascinated, I saw it draw a neat circle and from this develop an entire flower, petal, leaves, and stem without lifting from the paper or retracing a single line. Halfway down the page, something like a script developed, neat straight across the page, something with a pattern to it, but unreadable. It almost appeared to be backward writing. Feeling very foolish, I took the paper to the mirror and read Message for Mary, Agnes, there were no capitals or punctuation. At lunch, I asked Mary, a nurse's aide, do you know anyone called Agnes? Mary stopped as if I'd struck her, stared at me, and then burst into tears. What a mean thing for you to say, Mary responded. You must know I was a friend of Agnes. Don't you remember the woman who died just four months ago? Well, that was Agnes. Before I could apologize, she ran off down the hall sobbing. Lillian explained how the writing soon became a part of her life. Her contacts called themselves Pheros and were soon providing realms of information about the esoteric world. I didn't appreciate my new gift, she said. It upset my routines. I was curious and wasted my spare time with the writing. I asked how these transmissions were sent and was told they used the hemoglobin in the bloodstream. In an attempt to close down the automatic writing, Lillian asked to be checked out by some people with the local Edgar Casey group. Professor Ballbrush in Los Angeles said I was a natural medium. I wanted no part of it, so he said he'd help me close my chakras. Two 20-minute sessions and my problems were over. The writing ceased, the hands cramped, that plagued me to write when I didn't want to, ceased and I was free to be myself again. How to do automatic writing. 
Use automatic writing only if and when you want to do it. Never under any conditions allow the unseen to dictate to you. A wise entity will gently guide, but will never tell you exactly what to do. Be wary, stop writing if you should receive such advice or vile language. I would recommend that you go back to our discussions of the Law of One material and that you should challenge any entity that comes through and ask them if they come in the name of Christ or whatever entity you consider to be the highest. First, pick a time and place where it is perfectly quiet and you will not be interrupted. A semi-dark room is ideal. Use a large writing or drawing pad and a smooth writing pen. Felt tip pens seem to work the best. Then do at least 10 minutes of deep yoga breathing. While you sit comfortably with the pad in your lap, swirl overlapping ovals across the page with your pen. Hold the pen loosely in your hand and keep your wrist like a rubber band, loose and relaxed. Practice closing your eyes while continuing the spirals. Open them, but not all the way. Don't focus on the page, unfocus your eyes, or focus beyond the page. This 10 minute period is to relax your body and to quiet your mind. When outside thoughts come in, simply brush them aside and think only of the blank page before you. Next, when you're very relaxed and your mind is quiet, begin the induction. I'd suggest that you make a tape of it, followed by the automatic writing script at the end of these instructions. That way, all you have to do is click on the player. The tape then assists you to establish white light protection and will guide you into the writing process, which I will do for you here in a second. From this point on, the process is self-explanatory, but here is a tip that may be of value. Once you hear the instructions telling you to allow the information to come through, just barely open your eyes. This will not awaken you and begin the swirls. Never let your pen stop. If it takes off on its own, get out of the way, mentally and physically, and let it happen. The automatic writing has begun. Don't attempt to read and understand the writing as it is coming through. This can pull your conscious mind back into the process and cycle per second activity of your brain could move back up into a beta level. Another tip, if you, after swirling for a while, the automatic writing has begun to flow, but you're receiving strong thoughts about something, go ahead and write down your thoughts. Use the same loose motion you've used with the swirls. You are initially writing your thoughts with the full awareness of what you're doing, but very often the pen will just take off on its own. It may take several practice sessions to get the feel of automatic writing, but it will work. Automatic writing usually works best if you have a specific question in mind. I always suggest that you write the question at the top of the page. You'll be open to receiving information only from your own higher self, your guides, masters, highly evolved or loving entities who mean you well or from those whom you request contact at first until you have become proficient with the technique. You may not want to limit the information you can receive by specifying who is to supply it. In other words, if your guide knows the answer and is available to communicate it to you, you might learn from him than by calling on your deceased grandmother. So, Let's get into a relaxed state, so find a place where you can relax and we will begin the process of inducing an alpha theta state for you to do this automatic writing. First, use deep breathing to relax your body and mind. Take a very deep in-breath and hold it for as long as you comfortably can. Let the breath out slowly through slightly parted lips. This allows you to retain the moisture in your mouth. When you think there is no air left in your lungs, contract your stomach muscles and force out any that remains. Then repeat the process 
do this diaphragm breathing for two to five minutes before you begin the body relaxation when you begin to relax your physical body play the role play the part and imagine your body relaxing in response to the suggestions so for a few minutes I just want you to do some deep breathing in your diaphragm breathing in holding it and then breathing out through your diaphragm The relaxing power is now entering the toes of both your feet at the same time. It is moving right on down into the ball, into the arches, into your heels, and up into your ankles. Completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And the relaxing power now moves on up your legs to your knees, relaxing all the muscles as it goes and now on up to your legs to your thighs and to your hips just completely relaxing and your full attention is on relaxing your body as the relaxing power now moves on up into the fingers of both your hands relaxing your hands And your forearms are relaxing and your upper arms are relaxing your fingers and hands and forearms and upper arms are now completely relaxed and the relaxing power moves on down into the base of your spine relaxing the base of your spine And beginning to move slowly up your spine up your spine up your spine and into the back of your neck and shoulder muscles and the back of your neck and shoulder muscles are now becoming loose and limp loose and limp just completely relaxed and the relaxing power now moves on up the back of your neck and into your scalp relaxing your scalp and the feeling of relaxation now drains on down into your facial muscles 
relaxing them. Your jaw is relaxed. You leave a little space between your teeth and your throat is relaxed. Your entire body is now relaxed all over in every way and all tension is gone from your body and mind. And you now draw a beam of shimmering, iridescent white light down from above. This is the universal light of life energy, the God light. You imagine it. You create it with the unlimited power of your mind. And the light enters your crown chakra of spirituality at the top of your head. You feel it beginning to flow through your body and mind flowing through your body and mind and beginning to concentrate around your heart area. And you now imagine the light emerging from your heart area and totally surrounding your body with a protective aura of bright white God light. And you are completely protected, totally protected. Only your own guides and masters or highly evolved and loving entities who mean you well will be able to influence you in any way. As you continue to relax, feeling protected, you see yourself at the top of a stairway and you begin to walk down the stairs. Down as you count backwards from seven to one. Seven. Deeper. 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 Down. Down. Six. Deeper. 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 Down. 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 Five. Deeper. 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 Down. 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 Four. Deeper. 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 Down. 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 Three. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Two. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. One. And you are now relaxed and at ease, and you feel a sense of deepness. You remain consciously aware of your surroundings, but your body is going to sleep. To sleep. To sleep. Seven. Deeper. Deeper. Down. Down. Six. Deeper. Deeper. Deeper, down, 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 five, deeper, 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 down, 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 four, deeper, 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 down, 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 three, deeper, 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 down, down. Two, deeper, deeper, down, down, down. One. And you are now in a deep, deep altered state of consciousness. And you are now relaxed and at ease and peacefully centered. 
you feel in balance and in harmony. A quietness of spirit permeates your body and mind as you now open to become a channel for successful automatic writing. You absolutely have the power and ability to step outside of yourself and allow the energy of your higher mind or an entity of your choice to communicate with you through your hand via automatic writing. Say to yourself, I now focus upon what I desire to learn through automatic writing. I simplify my question to the one well-worded sentence which I will now repeat over and over as a mantra. I will meditate upon the source of the information I wish to access. And it is now time to call your guides and masters to assist you to intensify the connection and to spiritually protect you during this session. Call out silently in your mind to them. Hear your voice echo across the universe then return to you. And it is now time to intensify the spiritual protection. So you begin to visualize very, very vividly a bright white light coming down from above and entering the crown chakra of spirituality on the top of your head. This is the universal light of life, love, energy, the God light. See it. Feel it. A shimmering, iridescent beam of white, bright light entering your crown chakra and beginning to flow through your body and mind. You feel it flowing through you and beginning to concentrate around your heart area. And you now imagine the light emerging from your heart area and totally surrounding you with an aura of protection. And you seek divine protection in the white light of God's love. You seek protection from all things seen and unseen, all forces and all elements. 
protect you throughout this session, assuring only sincere contact with highly evolved and loving entities or with higher mind or higher self and protect you through the days, weeks and months and years that follow. You ask it, you beseech it, you mark it, and so it is. And you are totally protected. Only your own guides and masters or those you invite may communicate through your hand. And now it is time to connect with the source of the information you seek to come through your hand. You do this now. You imagine the source and silently in your mind make your wishes known. Make this connection and imagine it vividly. All right. In just a moment, you will open your eyes and begin writing. You absolutely have the power and ability to allow the energy to flow through you and to receive awareness through this technique. When you open your eyes, they will be just barely open and you will keep your pen moving at all times. On the count of three, you will open your eyes and begin to write automatically. I will leave a large amount of time for you to write in this session, but you can always pause this episode and continue to write for as long as you need to. One, two, three. Take as long as you want to do the writing. At the end of the session, you can awaken yourself. I will give several minutes for you to do this writing now.
writing is now complete and it is time to return. So close your eyes and take a few minutes to thank the source of information. And it is now time to return to full beta consciousness. On the count of five, you will open your eyes and be wide awake, remembering everything you just experienced in this session. You will awaken fully alert, thinking and acting with calm self-assurance, protected and fully in control, feeling glad to be alive and at peace with yourself, the world and everyone in it. One, two, three, four, five. Wide awake, opening your eyes. Now I would love it if you could share with me what you wrote down. You don't have to, but I would love it if you shared it with me. Put it in the comments, share it in the Facebook group, I would love to come back and do another episode sharing some of the wonderful writings that you created in my voice. You can do this again and you can always pause it. I gave approximately seven minutes about for you to do the automatic writing, but obviously you could sit and do this for as long as you want. And this is just the beginning. You can come back and use this as an induction or you can do it on your own. This is just a beginning. For you to access this some people find it easier to do with a typewriter or a computer that is how i like to do it it is a form of channeling but it can also be a way of communicating with your higher self or yourself to ask your questions from within it is a process of connecting to the parts of you within so i would love to get your responses and how it turned out in any case you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution